Moon Mondays, unleash your feminine power through astrology. I'm Sheridan, your go-to astrology life coach, sharing this week's woman-centered astrology, empowering you to use astrology to realize your potential. That's what I'm all about, empowering women to be their full, authentic, unique individual selves. This week of October 14th, we start with the moon in Pisces, Venus at the end of Scorpio. She's entering Sagittarius on the full moon on Thursday, and the sun is in the latter degrees of Libra. The moon is still waxing, gaining light, moving towards this Aries full moon, a super moon on Thursday. We're still in that building energy time in the moon cycle, culminating with the full moon on Thursday. With the moon in Pisces today and most of tomorrow, notice what you're feeling, right? Notice your emotional body. Pisces is a water sign that helps us to feel all our feels so we can heal what ails us and blocks us from communing with the divine, with spirit, with the goddess herself. So what are you feeling while the moon is in Pisces, right? Yesterday, today, and part of tomorrow. My focus is helping you tune into what the moon moving through the different signs means for uniquely you, right? What, is it, what does it offer you? What energy do you notice inside? How are you feeling? How can you work with these energies to help you build the life that you most want to be living? Then notice what you feel as the moon enters Aries tomorrow on Tuesday as we build towards this full moon's energy, right? This super moon. <clears throat> so interesting that the moon conjuncts, meaning meets up with Neptune tomorrow as well, upping the Pisces energy. Neptune is the planet that helps us to open our hearts to the universe. That's why it's so aligned with Pisces, right? So again, there's lots of feeling energy up right now. But how does it feel to you, right? That's the most important question. I like to take notes in my journal on how I'm feeling with the constantly changing moon signs, right? Is a way to understand how the moon connects with my day-to-day -day experience, I think of the moon as the planet that it tunes us to our souls. It's our soul planet, right? It helps us to connect with and receive messages from our souls. And as it moves through the different signs, there's a different way that we get those messages or we feel those feelings or we connect with that energy. On Wednesday, after the moon enters Aries, it conjuncts, again, meets up with Chiron, the healer planet. I love this energy as we move into this powerful supermoon on Thursday. For us women, Aries can often be an energy we're not allowed to have, right? So Aries is the fierce warrioress who is learning about who she is, her boundaries, and her strong independence, right? The patriarchy often tells us women standing in their Aries power that we're bitches, right? Or that we're so angry or we're too much, right? Yuck to all of that, right? Aries is amazing. We need to stand in our power. I heard the term sacred anger in the Venus alchemy class I was teaching last week. One of the women said it, and I thought this is perfect for Aries, for us women, for our sacred empowerment. Feeling angry at the patriarchy seems like the exactly right feelings to have, right? We need to honor and express our sacred anger as part of our journey to reclaim ourselves and our feminine power. An airy supermoon, meaning the moon is especially close to the earth, seems like the perfect time to honor, express, and celebrate our sacred honor, right? Uh, uh, anger, sorry, not honor, our sacred anger. Honor our sacred anger. So the Aries full moon is early on Thursday morning for me on Colorado time. Many astrologers and spiritual people share about the full moon is the time for releasing, right? And I understand this is just after the full moon is when the moon starts releasing its light 
waning, getting smaller on its path back to the sun for the next new moon. But I think we can have an overemphasis on like constantly doing our work, right? We said new moon intentions and then at the full moon, we're like releasing energy. And it's like this releasing can come the following day, right? The day after the full moon, right? So instead, like our ancestors before us, let's celebrate on the full moon first, right? Gosh, as women, we need to take more time to celebrate ourselves because we're so freaking hard on ourselves. So I say with the full moon, especially this Aries full super moon, celebrate you as you dance around the metaphoric bonfire with all of us moon sisters, right? Celebrate something in your life, something that you've accomplished, something you've done, big or small, right? I like to take the full moon time for looking back on the past two weeks of the actional waxing cycle of the moon and choose one thing, one action, one step that I took that felt right, right? Something that helped it felt like it helped me on my path to being more of who I truly am. So that would be my invitation to you is celebrate that, right? What's that one thing, that one action, the one step that you took over these past couple of weeks that felt right, right? An accomplishment. And it felt like it helped you on your path to being more of who you truly are, right? So the Aries step into our individual full individual power full moon is the perfect energy for this. Also on the day of the full moon, Thursday, Venus wraps up her time in feeler sign Scorpio and moves into adventurer sign Sagittarius. So our divine feminine energy, Venus, our divine feminine planet moves from a watery inward focus out into fiery independent Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a seeking sign. It's often said to be on some sort of a spiritual quest. So just think about like, what will you be seeking or what kind of a quest are you on over this Venus month? On October 5th, right, a couple weeks ago, Venus met with the moon and we entered the solar plexus chakra gate. And this is following the oldest myth that we have written in the world, which is actually about Venus and the Venus cycle. So Venus is in the evening star phase of her cycle. So look for her in the Western sky a little after sunset. She'll be the first star you see, right? This evening star part of the Venus cycle is all about reclaiming our power with in each of our chakras, right? When the moon meets with Venus in the evening sky, we move through another one of these gates as the goddess in the story rises out of the underworld. And we put align the chakras with the seven gates that the goddess goes through. And so now we are at this solar plexus chakra. And now we're actually like reclaiming our power of this whole evening star time but we're actually at the power center chakra, the solar plexus chakra. So this is such perfect timing with the Aries full moon. If you want to learn more about the Venus cycle, I have a free video on my website, SheridanSemple.com, and I'll just put the link below as well. It's like a short video that can kind of explain in a short overview to it. So we're now two weeks out from the intentions we set at the Libra new moon. So how is that going for you? Have you been taking baby steps towards that intention? The full moon is a good time to check in and look at the next baby steps you want to take for this waning part of the moon cycle. So after the full moon, still on Thursday, the moon enters Taurus. And this could feel like a nice respite, but how does it feel for you? right? Taurus drops us back down into our bodies, into our feeling senses. Taurus wants to relax and do what feels good in the body, right? So does that feel good to you? Do you have a lot of earth on your chart? Do you have Taurus on your chart? Or do you have a lot of air and that's more challenging for you, right? This is all about figuring out what the astrology feel like for, feels like for you and the opportunity that the energy gives you to move yourself towards living your best life. So 
this moon moving into Taurus is I think a nice energy to begin the waning part of the moon cycle where we naturally slow down and begin to turn inward. Think of it like our menstrual cycles, right? At the full moon, we ovulate and then start moving towards bleeding at the new moon. Your cycle may be on a different timing or you may be done cycling like I am, but that's the energy I'm describing, right? You know how that feels. So we finished the week with the moon meeting with Uranus on Saturday, our planet that helps us connect with universal consciousness, right? Often inspiring changes in our awareness and clearing out blockages to our consciousness. Then the moon enters Gemini to close out the week. So more mental consciousness, awareness, energy supported by Uranus to help us get out of the tight little closed boxes that we create for ourselves, that we build around ourselves. So this is a good time to pay attention and open up to any slight changes, right? I'm all about the baby steps in your perspectives that open the box up for you. So see you next Monday for next week's Moon Mondays when the moon meets with expansive Jupiter and enters Cancer, which a lot of people call the moon sign. If you want to learn more about creating your ideal life with the moon, grab my free guide, Three Steps to Changing Your Life with the New Moon at my website, SheridanSemple.com, or I'll put the link below. Comment, ask me questions, and like below if you feel so inspired. Thanks for watching, and I wish you a feminine, empowered week.